Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Prince Dyke, the Prince of Investing, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Hollywood, Hawaii, via Denver, Colorado. I like my new cup, huh? Thanks to my wife for that. But anyway, how you may be catching this, I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So we're going to jump straight into it. So today's video and topic is going to be about what are leveraged EV ETFs. Leveraged ETFs. What are leveraged ETFs? So before we can talk about what are leveraged ETFs, I'm going to talk about what are ETFs in general, what are leveraged ETFs, and how they can be added to your portfolio to pretty much put your portfolio or your position or whatever you have on steroids. Then we're going to talk about the advantages. Then we're going to talk about the disadvantage, and we're going to talk about how they kind of work. All right? So let's stay tuned. So first of all, let's talk about what I said. We're going to talk about what are ETFs. What are ETFs? First, ETFs are, is, is an acronym for Exchange Traded Funds. Exchange Traded Funds are uh, exchange traded funds pretty much you know what a mutual fund is, or you heard of a mutual fund. It's like a mutual fund. It tracks a particular entity. For a prime example, you have all types of ETFs out there. You have ETFs that track oil. You have ETFs that track the retail market. You have ETFs that track the stock market. You probably heard me mention that in, in, the, in the past. ETFs, uh, you know, getting an ETF to track the S&P 500. You have ETFs that track indexes, all types of things. So what they pretty much are, they are, in it. they're pretty much, you know, how you have a basket, let's say um, the S&P 500. You don't have enough money to go and buy every stock in the S&P 500. I'm not speaking to everybody. Maybe you do, who knows? But let's say you're like, hey, I don't have enough money to buy everything in the S&P 500, but how can I get some of the benefits and get some of the, uh, uh, earn some of the returns that the S&P 500 earns? There are several ways to do that. You can do it via index fund. You can do it via mutual fund. You can do it via a ETF. All the ETF does is it's passive. All it does is it just tracks the S&P 500. When the S&P 500 goes down, so does it. When the S&P 500 goes up, so does it. When the S&P 500 stays the same, so does it. Unlike a uh, particular mutual fund, an uh, ETF trades like a stock. When you buy into a mutual fund, you got what you end of the day, the last trade of the day, but the ETF, it prices moves daily, depending on what's its track, what it is tracking. The defining difference is ETFs are passively managed, meaning that there's no manager back there trying to beat the market or beat something. All it does is track something. For prime example, um, you may have something called like B Boog, B O O G, that's Victor Oscar Oscar um, Golf. Meaning this is the Boo Vanguard's top S and P five hundred growth stocks. So it picks out its growth stocks, or someone picks out the growth stocks inside the Vanguard S and P five hundred, and it just tracks those stocks. So those are the things I like to look at when I look at a uh, not a stock, but those are the things I like look not the, like to look at. But it's kind of a general synopsis of what an ETF is. They still pay dividends. Um, the expense ratio is usually pretty low, lower compared to a, a mutual fund, because a mutual fund, you have a basket of stocks, and you have someone actively managing them. They're buying, they're selling, they're doing this or whatever. Versus a ETF, it is just tracking whatever it's supposed to track. Hey, just track this particular index, track this particular industry, track these four or five stocks, that's it, right? So they have their way of, <clears throat> it's an easy way to be able to say, hey, for 200 bucks, I can get the benefit of the whole entire stock market, right? Versus just trying to get the whole entire benefit of just, uh, you get the whole entire benefit of the entire stock market instead of trying to pay more fees because try to pay more fees to a mutual fund or on like an index fund, you can buy and sell it rather, relatively easy and it moves up and down like a stock. So I hope that doesn't confuse you too much, but that's what an ETF is, an exchange-traded fund, right? Biggest, big takeaways is it tracks something, 
it's a monitor. You know, you can do the S and P five hundred, all type of things like that. But one of the big takeaways is, is it trades like a stock. It's passively managed, and it's a way to be able to get benefit of an entire industry with just a purchase of one particular uh, security. So, also thanks to education is dope. Uh, I think it's a local nonprofit raising five two eight zero on Facebook. So yeah, definitely thank them for uh, the shirt. Definitely appreciate it. Now back to the 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 topic. Now one of the things that they do is now that's the S and P five uh, not the S and P five hundred but that's the ETF and exchange traded fund. Now we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of an ETF. Some of your main advantages of a particular ETF. Is you know it trades easy like a stock, right? It trades easy like hey, I can just go in, I can just buy something, I can buy something that tracks it. It kind of beats a mutual fund because a mutual fund uh, has more fees associated with it in most cases, and you know I can buy and sell it. Those are two biggest things. Hey, I can I don't have to go and buy every stock in S and P five hundred. I can do that via ETF and be able to. Buy and sell it pretty fast, get dividends, all those great things, right? That's advantages. Disadvantages of an ETF. One of the disadvantages I know with ETF, and in, in particular with the uh, S and P 500 tracking the ETF, I mean tracking the S and P 500, is every time you buy it, it's a fee. Every time you sell it, it's a fee. So, a prime example. Let's say every month I buy uh, S and P 500. Um, Every month, I buy the S&P 500 ETF to get some of the stock market returns. Every time I go buy that, you know, I know you have some brokers that does it for free, like you may have a Robinhood that has free trading or whatever the case may be. But most of them, like a, you trade to your mirror trade, most of your traditional brokers, they're going to charge you 4 or $5 or $6 or whatever the case may be every time you buy and another $6 every time you sell. So if you brought this thing every single month, that little six dollars add up, add up, add up, add up, add up, add up, and add up, right? But when you look at something, when you compare that to a particular index fund, um, you can get a commission-free index fund, fund, meaning that, like a prime example, with S and P five hundred, you have S W P P X, which is Sierra X Ray Papa Papa X Ray. If I'm not mistaken, that's a symbol. I think it's Charles Schwab's index fund for the S&P 500. And what that does is every time I buy that, I don't have to pay a fee. I don't have to pay a fee every single time I buy that. It's commission-free. So then the expense ratio is a tad bit lower than that of the ETF, right? So I get a tad bit lower expense ratio, meaning more money in my pocket, not into the broker's pocket. and it's no commission every time I buy it. So let's say you have one person who buys an index fund every month, one person who buys an ETF every month, and they're both checking the S&P 500. Let's say the person transaction fees are $5. Off of general, off the of top, the in one year, a person is going to spend $60 if they brought one ETF every single month or two ETFs or whatever the case may be. Because of the transaction fee every month, so that's $5 times 12, that's $60. Two years, that's a hundred dollars. Three years, that's a hundred and eighty dollars. You guys can see this just going just transaction fees, right? Versus the person who purchases the index fund, they're getting the same returns you're getting. They're getting the same dividend check you're getting, but without the uh, without the uh, the fees up front. So that's one of the one of my biggest noticeable things when you're an index person. You're in an S and P five hundred. All new investors, I believe about seven eighty percent of your portfolio should probably be should be the baseline of your portfolio. Because if you don't know this, I want to get off into a tyrant, but over 95, 92, 95% of investors on a, um, over time do not beat the S&P 500. Now you can save room in there to go out and buy particular stocks. You can save some room in there to get other things, but that's what, um, that's one of the logics behind that. You know, one of the ways you can participate in the S&P 500 without being part of S&P 500. Another thing is, uh, when you're talking about your, now that we're talking, we spoke about what are ETFs, right? Then we talk about the advantages of ETFs. We spoke about the disadvantage of ETFs. Now we're going to speak about what are leverage ETFs, what the whole topic is supposed to be about. So let's get into what are leverage ETFs. Now, leverage ETFs pretty much takes a position 
and puts you on puts it on steroids. Let's say for prime example, ETF. But ETF, on top of that, I spoke about how it tracks things. It can do the opposite of things as well. For prime example, you know how you can you, you can invest in S and P five hundred ETF that tracks the S and P five hundred. You can also purchase an ETF that goes against the S and P five hundred. It shorts whatever you're trying to do. What I mean by that is, as the S and P five hundred goes up, this ETF loses money. But when this when when the S and P five comes down, it makes money. So some people use these in a way to balance out or to hedge their portfolio. They know another market crash will happen, even though right now it doesn't seem that way. It hasn't happened in one, two, three years, right? I mean, it hasn't happened in like nine years. People were thinking about, hey, when is this crash going to happen? But as yet, it hasn't happened. What are some ways you can hedge against your portfolio? You can do that with an ETF that goes against the stock market. So as the stock market goes down, it makes money. As the stock market goes up, it doesn't make money. So you can make bearish positions positions, meaning that you're thinking the uh, market will go down, um, or you say, hey, what if the market goes down? All I have is stocks. What is the way I can make money on a bear market or when the market goes down? You can do that through uh, ETFs. That's a way to hedge over time or whatnot. So now, a leverage ETF takes whatever you're doing and it puts it on steroids. Most of the time, you have things like uh, SPXL is a big one. Grab a little water here. Mouth again, a little dry. And I want to show off my favorite coffee cup. <coughs> Even though I don't drink coffee. But uh, you can buy like SPXL. So you have, we spoke about BO. One second, please. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. A little water then caught up from the throat. A little windpipe. But the thing about it is, like, we, we have the VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500, right? To go against, you know, so as the S&P 500 goes up, <clears throat> VOO, Vanguard, goes up. It just tracks the S&P 500. Let's say if you want to leverage it, meaning that you want to, you say, hey, well, right now, I got Vanguard S&P 500. is only up about 6%. That, you know, that's not very great to me. So I want to get more into what is, you know, I want to get a bigger bang for my buck. I really believe the stock market is going to go up. And, you know, how can I um, leverage myself? Now, things you can do, you can buy calls against the market. You can do all types of things like that or whatnot. Leaps and calls and sell um, calls and sell puts, things like that. But one way you can achieve that is through a leverage ETF. For prime example, I challenge you to look up SPXL, Stan, um, Stanley, Stanley um, P as in Peter, X as in X, L as in Lima. What this does is what, whenever the market goes up, this goes up three times as much as the market. What this instrument does is heavy on fees. It's 1% in expense ratio, but you got to understand why it has 1% expense ratio. Because this ETF, they're pretty much buying calls and leaps and futures. They're doing everything to be so bullish on the market that it requires a lot of fees. When you're buying and selling calls and doing this, that's $5 here, $10 here, $20 here, 30 a high turnover ratio. Because they're betting the market is going to go up. So as the market, if the market goes up like last year, the market went up about 20%. The uh, leverage ETF went up about 60%, right? Now, it would, the same thing would happen on the reverse side. Instead of the market going up 20%, they said the market went down 20%. That leverage ETF is going to go down 20%, right? But this is something that I've been thinking about. Well, if, you are, if you're long-term on the market, if you're a person that's, hey, I'm a long-term person, I'm very long on the market, over 5, 10, a year, whatever the case may be, I'm bullish in the long term, how do you think that that leverage ETF will uh, perform over 5, 10, 20, 30 years, right? So that's something, that's a position you could think about. But what it does is it does the same thing. You can short the market. So as the market comes down, you can make three times as much money. So let's say for prime example, the market goes down 2%. Your, your um, short ETF could make 6%. 
kind of catch my drift, it takes your position and it puts it on steroids. So if you're someone that is bullish and you think that the market is going to go up, you're going to make you're going to make three times as much. It puts it on, it takes your position and puts it exactly, makes it even stronger. So let's say that you got an S&P 500, it goes up 8% this year. The leverage ETF is going to go up 24%, right? So that's some, you know, even though the fees are going to be way, 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 way higher, because a regular ETF, the fees only like point, point zero four, but you're paying a whole, like someone who's paying four cents versus someone who's paying a whole dollar. But who cares if they're getting great performance? If the S&P 500 goes up 8% and someone makes, you know, uh, your investor make 15%, you probably won't care about paying a little extra in fees, bring you down to 12%, right? So let's say if I, I had a portfolio manager and I told them, hey, beat the S&P 500. S&P 500 goes up 8% and um, the S&P 500 goes up 8%. This person makes me 24% and they want to take 4% so I can have 20. Hey, you know what? That's not bad. So that's the thing I want people to understand. When you're looking at leveraged ETFs, when you're looking at certain things, right? So they can be utilized to help hedge or to make your position even stronger. If you really believe that tomorrow or by the end of the year, I know the market is going to crash. It's going to crash down to 15,000 points in the Dow Jones. I just know it's going to happen. I don't know the Dow Jones short leverage ETF, but this is an investment that you can make awesome investment instrument that you can utilize to make your position even stronger, how you can make money off of a bear market and you can make your position two to three times stronger. All right. So I hope that kind of makes sense with some of this. Most of them still pay dividends slightly lower. They pay a little bit in dividends. Then they have a little expense ratio with it. And the expense ratio is way higher. That's a disadvantage. The, the disadvantage is a high expense ratio and the extreme amount of risk you're taking if you're wrong. Let's say myself today, I went and brought, uh, I think the market's going to crash or I think the market's going to crash. So I go buy a short leverage ETF. If the market continues to go up, not only am I going to miss out on the market returns, I'm also going to be paying every day that thing goes up, I'm going to be losing more and more and more and more money on my shorts. That's something I want you guys to think about. All right. Leverage ETFs. So, um, but on the, on the flip side, if you are a bullish person, and let's say the market goes from 25,000 and it goes up to 26, crosses a new high. Everybody else makes one to two percent. You can make three to four percent. That's the that's the advantages and disadvantages of using the ET, uh, leverage ETF. So we spoke about what are ETFs, the advantages of ETFs, the disadvantages of ETFs. What are leverage ETFs, the advantages of leverage ETFs, the disadvantages of leverage ETFs. So, hey, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. I just want to spark your mind to think about something because education is most certainly dope. Uh, and um, that's all. But this is going to be a short episode today. That's going to conclude my topic for today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in across the globe. Um, thanks, for everybody, who's going to catch the playback, uh, who's going to catch the uh, – who's catching this over iHeartRadio. Um, iTunes, all of this stuff like that. So if you're not following us, we are available on Apple iTunes. We're available on iHeartRadio. We're available on Spotify. Uh, we're available on SoundCloud, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, whatever the case may be. To get the audio experience if you want to, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and I tweet a little bit every now and then, Twitter as well. And most definitely here on YouTube, you can follow us as well, the Investor Show. So, Without further ado, until the next podcast, video, or cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, thank you. I think I kind of love this cup. You might see this on every episode. <laughs>